Hello guys, I am still on Mallorca and actually came here to this pretty cool place. It's like a very high hill that you can see like a 360 degrees panorama over like most of the island, at least the south uh, east side of the island. And I'm going to shoot some panoramas of the Milky Way. The sky is pretty clear now. I actually had a completely different idea for today different location it was cloudy then i switched locations and it cleared out in the meantime so that is great what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the benro polaris this is the mount that i have been using uh, lately on this trip and i love it i have a review of this mount link will be in the description if you want to check it out if you haven't already and i'm gonna take um, 28 from sigma this is what I'm using for landscape, uh, sort of astrophotography, um, also um, panels and that sort of stuff. And um, what else? And I'm also going to be testing and showing you guys something that um, I have been using lately and testing. This is the uh, this is this thing. This is a uh, focus on stars. Focus on stars, yeah. Focus on stars filter. This is a something like a button of mask that, um, well, it's, it, it acts like a button of mask for focusing for wide angle lenses. So it looks like this. It's a, it's a square filter that you can put into a filter holder. And you can use this even with very wide angle lenses to focus perfectly on the stars at night. I'm gonna show you what kind of difference does it make. Um, in just a second but yeah i need to pack up some stuff and head back i'm actually at the location right now you're gonna see it it's pretty epic let's go all right so this is the location and check this out we have this kind of a monument here that is luckily not illuminated and then behind it we have the milky way here is scorpius with row of yuki and there we have the milky way band that spans across here somewhere here is cygnus and here down below we have the panoramic view over different towns, different sort of uh, beaches around Mallorca. It looks pretty amazing and the sky looks pretty good by now. So we are actually going to go behind this monument and then behind it we're going to shoot the Milky Way with uh, all of those little towns and the sea uh, below so i'm just gonna <clears throat> set up polaris right now i'm not gonna go into too much detail how i do it because i have it on this separate video but you can just watch me do it here in the field so uh, need to level this thing We are pretty close to Antares right now and like I said uh, I'm gonna be using the uh, where's this I'm gonna be using the focus on stars filter to focus today and the way it works the way it works is uh, like I showed it to you earlier it's a it's a square filter uh, so I actually need a filter holder so I'm just gonna screw that onto my lens real quick I have some very cheap um, Chinese knockoff something here doesn't really matter because it's just supposed to hold the filter and we are pretty good all right let's see what's on the camera all right, so here's what we see on the back of the camera. I'm actually going to get rid of all of this clutter and I don't know if you can see that, but we have actually Antares here. So Polaris was pretty close um, right from the get-go to get on Polaris, to <laughs> sorry, to slew on, onto Antares, but we're definitely not focused. So 
what you would normally do so we would go to um, like five times magnification at the beginning and this is uh, one of the bright stars might be even Antares and then you would just use the yeah, that's it that's it that's Antares and then you can go to 10 times magnification and let's uh, have Antares in the center here and then I would just use the focus ring as you can see this is out of focus this is probably somewhere I'm, I, I just passed focus and then onto the other side so this is out of focus again and traditionally you would just try to make this star as small as possible yeah probably something like this would be my bet that I am in focus but let's actually confirm this with focus on stars because I was testing it uh, another night and I found out that using this method of focusing which is what I have been using for the longest time for a couple of years wasn't actually perfect focus uh, so let me put this on you can see in greater detail this is how the filter looks um, uh, it's created by Gabor Takax I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this at least somewhat correctly this is a guy, astronomer from Hungary, who was kind enough to send these filters to me actually a while ago. He has this version for wide-angle lenses and another version for telephoto. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I have this on my trip to Mallorca now, so let's see. Uh, let's actually confirm if I did focus correctly or not. So I'm just sliding this into the filter holder. And as you can see, I'm actually pretty close into focus right now because the way you would use this filter this is like a button of mask sort of it creates this diffraction pattern and your goal to achieve perfect focus is to make sure that the three spikes that are either on the bottom or on the top they're like a, they're symmetrical it's the same that they are uh, spaced out spaced out evenly so when I move the focus as you can see the spike kind of the spikes kind of mm, change their position with regards to each other so the perfect focus would be in a place where they are exactly equidistant from each other which is um, probably somewhere here I could actually take a shot to confirm Okay, and let's take a look. Let's zoom in. And as you can see, actually, uh, I'm a little bit, the center spike is a little bit closer to the left ones than there, there is to the right ones. So I can try to um, adjust this again. As you can see, even with a guide, with an aid like the, this filter, it's not that straightforward so let's take another test shot the thing with traditionally focusing is that you you really need to kind of feel it out where could be the place where you have perfect focus and you cannot directly compare it to what the size of the star would be a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right on the focuser however here you can see exactly the position of those spikes uh, so you don't need to compare it to something that you have in your memory and as you can see right now I still need to move it a little bit to the right but I'm getting close hang on a second this is not easy yep let's try this and again by uh, evaluating an exposure that has been taken without such a filter it's impossible to know if you are in perfect focus or not because you have nothing to compare what you are seeing to however here you can clearly see those spikes and as you can see right now I am indeed in perfect focus so yeah this filter looks pretty great and it works pretty great I think now I have the full confidence that I am indeed in focus so let's try to do um, maybe like a couple of vertical panels here we're gonna see what kind of composition do we get so you might ask yourself why do I even need a device like focus on stars if I can focus without it by making the star as small as I can 
and get to a position that is close enough to perfect focus it doesn't even make a difference if I make it to perfect focus if the size of the stars if the size of the star is barely noticeable if it's in perfect focus or almost in focus well I think it kind of matters because it's not only the sizes of the stars that are affected by you being in perfect focus and not but also the overall detail and sharpness in your image so all of the detail in the core of the Milky Way for instance the gas the dust clouds and all that stuff and also the details in your foreground elements in the distance if you have some cold foregrounds all of that will suffer a little bit in sharpness if you are not in perfect focus so if you spend a lot of money on a good camera and on a, an awesome bright and prime lens with wide aperture in order to let in a lot of light to get awesome details with little noise for your astro images but then you don't focus it perfectly you're not bringing out the full potential of such a camera system so by using filters i have to i'm going to get into that in a second by using those focusing aids like focus on stars you are making sure that you are bringing out the best that you can from your lens and your camera and focus on stars is the only uh, filters or focusing aid on the market that i know of at least that is capable of doing such a good job of bringing out the diffraction spikes even with very wide angle lenses i was testing it with a 16 millimeter on a full frame camera and it worked really well if you try to use a traditional button of mask that looks like this you wouldn't really uh, see much success in seeing diffraction spikes at wide angle lenses this is because the diffraction pattern really matters how fine it is those gratings how fine they are um, if you start using it with wide angle lenses this is really meant to be used with telephoto lenses or telescopes not with wide angle lenses so focus on stars that i have right here um, there are actually two versions of it let's see which one is this yeah this is the wide angle and this is the other one is for telephoto lenses there are two because like i said the the kind of grating that there is imprinted on the filter it really matters what focal lens are you using it so they look kind of the same the only difference uh, sort of by looking at it is that this one has imprinted for tele lens this is a little um little text on the bottom i hope you can see that here um, and this is meant to be used with telephoto lenses whereas this one is meant to be used with wide angle lenses and i have performed a bunch of tests using different lenses with these two filters and i can say that the wide angle version looks great up to like 50 millimeters maybe 85 and if you want to go up than that like 135 200 300 i would recommend the tele lens but uh, if you're if you want to get one of these only uh, i would definitely recommend the wide angle one if you're using it for like landscape astrophotography milky way all that stuff it's going to be great for like 16 millimeter 20 24 28 up to 50 like i said the difference between these is in the grating as you can see in these macro shots the grating on the two of these is a little bit different so if you want to get one of these for yourself there will be some links down below in the description of this video those links are affiliated so um it you, you it would be helpful for me if you uh, used uh, these through those links so i would appreciate that um each of these filters is about 150 dollars maybe a little bit less so it's definitely not cheap but like i said this is the only thing uh, on the market that can do produce bright and vivid diffraction spikes on wide angle lenses so you can get the best out of your camera system and get the best possible images that you can of the night sky so yeah i would definitely highly recommend them the only sort of for me downside of using these except for the price of course is that you have to use the filter holder you have to screw it in on the lens you need to use different sizes of uh, maybe uh, those step up rings in order to mount it um, to your to your lens if you're switching lenses you may need to switch those step up rings for filter holders or whatnot but i was actually talking to another astrophotographer and he said that he's using uh, these filters by just holding them in front of the camera so uh, you can just take this filter and basically if you're focusing just with one hand hold it in front of the camera and with another hand just try to focus and he said that it works great using this method so I, I haven't tried it myself yet I will definitely try it out if it works like this without the filter holder then this would be amazing so I would uh, recommend you to try that out as well so yeah that's basically it for me uh, I hope you found this video helpful if you did please make sure to leave it a like down below and subscribe uh, if you haven't already 
I will be posting more astro photography related videos soon so yeah definitely hit subscribe if you haven't already and see you in one of my next videos bye bye